All right, today we're gonna to learn how to set up and use the image tracking with the new Easy AR 4.0 SDK inside Unity. Uh, we're doing this because I think it's a really good alternative to the image tracking with Vuforia. Uh, the tracking is almost just as good, but you can publish on the App Store for free. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is go to easyar.com and create an account if you don't already have one. Um, first thing we need to get is go to the download section and we need to get the actual SDK. So there's a couple options here. Um, if you want to use the Easy AR samples, you can click this and download the Easy AR uh, Unity plugin with the samples uh, included in it. And that will give you like scenes that already do uh, image tracking, image tracking with a video on top, or they'll give you, um, I think they have user defined targets, you know, stuff like that. Um, what we're going to do today though is we're going to start from scratch because I hate having crap in my project that I don't need. So we're going to click Easy AR Sense Unity plugin and we're going to download this here. The next thing that we need to do is go to your account section and go to Sense Authorization and we need to generate a new license key. So this is my second test here. So make sure Easy AR Sense 4.0 is checked. We're going to check Personal Edition and we're going to do, let's see, app name. I'm going to call mine Test 2, Bundle ID, oops, no, Test 2. And then my bundle ID, com.mat.test2. And then same thing down here, test2. Um, you have to put in a spatial map database name, so just put in the same thing there. And then I think if we click confirm, I think that should be all we need. Okay, cool. So we're going to view this and then copy this to our clipboard. And then let's start a new Unity project. We'll call it just call it test or something like that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna drag the Easy AR plugin into Unity. Okay, and then import everything. Okay, now go to your scenes and let's rename this main. And then we need to put in our license key. So go to Easy AR, uh, resources, Easy AR, and then the settings scriptable object. Paste in your license key there. So that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna put in our bundle ID. So go to file, build settings. Uh, switch your platform to Android or iOS, whatever you prefer. And then add open scenes and then go to player settings. And then inside player settings, we're going to put in our bundle ID. So go back to Easy AR and we called it com.mat.test2. So we'll copy that, paste that into our package name there. And then we're on Android. So go to iOS and then paste it in there just to be safe. All right. So everything should be configured. Now, we need to get all the Easy AR stuff that we want in our scene. So go to Easy AR, Prefabs, Primitives, and we need to drag a bunch of things in here. So first thing we're gonna need is a, let's see, Easy AR, Prefab. We're gonna need a render camera. Uh, we're gonna need an image tracker. We're gonna need a world route. And then we need a camera device. And we need an image target. Cool. Now let's, click all these and unpack prefab completely. Let's drag these couple and put them uh, underneath the easy AR so that you just have easy AR and uh, image target. So that looks good there. Now we're going to need to fill out some stuff. Oh, before I forget, render uh, main camera, change sky or clear flags to solid color and we'll just make that black. So your game view should just be black. And then under easy AR here, we're going to have to fill in some stuff. So target controller, I think, is it that? No, it's that. Cool. World root controller, drag that in as well. Uh, assemble mode, change that to manual, and we're going to fill this out. So camera, drag in our main camera. Camera root, we'll drag in the main camera. Frame source, I think it's that. No. Is it this? No. Oh, frame source, video camera device. That's what it wants, I think. Yeah, cool. Render camera, we have one. Drag our render camera into here. And then frame filters, we have one of those as well. I think it's the image target. No, image track, there we go, image tracker, cool. Okay, so that is filled out, that looks good. Let's go to our render camera. That wants a target camera. We don't have to do anything with the external parameters. Image tracker, you could change this to a higher number if you want more simultaneous trackers, but we're only gonna deal with one right now. Uh, world root controlling hide one not tracking that looks good video camera device that looks perfect um, You could change this to prefer sur prefer surface tracking if you're doing that But we're gonna leave that with prefer object sensing 
and then image target that's where we're gonna have to fill some stuff out here so path type is gonna be streaming assets so we need to create uh, a streaming assets folder so we're gonna call that streaming assets beautiful open that folder and then this is where we're gonna drag in our image so this image is called cte.png so on here path we're gonna put cte.png name we're gonna call this crown the empire scale changes to one and then let's test and make sure this works so image target right click and let's create a cube as a child of the image target and then I think let's see let's get in here this looks like the front of our image so we're gonna have to resize this cube appropriately so 0.5 and then we're gonna move it yeah so negative half the size of it so negative 0.25 cool so that looks pretty good there. Let's test this out and see if it works. Ah. All right, cannot be verified. Let's go to setting, where are my preferences? Security and privacy. Easy error was blocked, allow anyway. All right, open. Cool. Sweet. We got a cube and it looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go over just a couple little things that I do when I'm starting a new Easy AR project. Okay, so first of all, um, this image target controller. Let's open this up and there's a couple little things that we're going to want to do inside here. Okay, so this image target controller class. Well, first of all, let's fix the brackets. Uh, but the image target controller class uh, inherits from this target controller class. So if we go to the declaration of this, you'll see that here, uh, this is where like the on tracking lost and found uh, functionality occurs. And what it's doing currently is it's setting the game object true and false. Uh, it's setting it active and inactive, which I don't particularly like that behavior. Um, Vuforia does something where they set the renderers active, like the mesh renderers and everything. So that's actually what we're going to do. So let's make a function void. Um, let's call it activate renderers. And that's going to take a bool called active. And what we're going to do here is for each um, render, rend in, get components and children. Get components in children renderer, and then we, there's a bool for uh, if it's going to do uh, include inactive children. We're going to set that to true, and then what we're going to do is rend dot enabled equals active. Sweet. Okay, so what that does actually is it searches recursively through all the children and finds all the renderers, and then sets them to our desired active state. So we're going to go everywhere that you see game object set active. We're going to change that to renders, set the renderers active. So we're going to do it up here on start. We're going to do it down here on tracking found. That's going to be true. And then on tracking lost down here, it's going to be false. And then let's format this because I hate looking at brackets like that. Okay, cool. So now we did that. Now that fixes that issue. The other issue is... Um, is this this public event target found and target lost you can see that it's being called down here um, you could do a script that say say for example inherits from image target controller and then you could add functions to that event but I think uh, maybe a little bit easier way is changing these to unity events and then we can expose them in the inspector so using uni engine dot events I believe and then let's change these to public unity events And we're going to have a target found event and we're going to have a target lost event and then we're just going to here um, instead of calling it like a function we're going to invoke it cool and then we'll do that down here beautiful okay now when we go back to unity and this compiles you'll see that we should have yes so we have target found and target lost so now what we can do here is we can add functions so for example um, say we wanted to add sounds so we can go create a folder 
let's call this sounds, and we're going to drag our two sounds, uh, tracking loss and found sounds, into here. Cool. Now let's create another folder, and we're going to call this, oh, oops, I made a script. Uh, we're going to make a script anyway. Call, call the script uh, audio controller. Okay, cool. And now make a folder for our scripts and just call it scripts. Cool. Drag that into our scripts folder. Perfect. Now, let's let's make a little audio controller type of script here. So, um, at the top, we're going to require component um, type of audio source. Okay, I think that's good practice for this. Yes. And then we don't need an update function. We will use our start function, but uh, we're gonna have two, oh, you know what, let's do two audio clips. One is gonna be called tracking found, and we're gonna, in brackets, serialize field, because we don't want it to be public, but we want it to show up in the inspector. Now let's make another one, and we'll call this tracking lost. Cool. And then we're going to have a private uh, audio source, just call it audio source. And then because we did require component, we can guarantee that this script is going to have an audio source component to it. So we can set our audio source to get components audio source. All right, we got that. Now let's just make two functions, uh, two public functions. Um, public void um, play found sound. That sounds weird, but sure. That's good, and then we're going to do audio source, um, play one shot, and then we're gonna pass in the tracking found audio clip. Awesome, and then we're gonna duplicate this, play tracking lost sound. Oops, play, play lost sound, yes, good, and we're gonna pass in tracking lost, and then we're gonna delete these unneeded using directives at the top, and I think um, hopefully this works. So let's create an empty game object back in Unity. And we're just going to call this audio controller. And then we're going to add our audio controller script to it. It should automatically add an audio source. Cool. We don't want it to play on awake. Um, now we do need to drag our sounds in here. So found. We're going to make that tracking found sound. And tracking lost, we're going to drag that in. And then on the image target controller, now we can add these functions to our Unity event that we made earlier. So you could use this Unity event for like, not just sound, but you could do it for playing, playing and stopping a video on tracking found or lost, or you know, triggering an animation or doing a whole variety of things, whatever you want. But for now, we're gonna drag this audio controller into both of these slots. And on tracking found, we're gonna call our audio controller, play found sound. And on lost, audio controller play a lost sound. Cool. So let's see if this does anything. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so now we're ready to test this on a device. So go to file build settings. And uh, since we're on Android, there's a couple things that we need to do here. So. Uh, first of all, they don't want multi-threaded rendering, so uncheck that. For graphics APIs, we don't want Vulkan, and we want uh, only actually OpenGL ES2. So we're going to add that, and then put that at the top, and actually just remove OpenGL ES3. So only OpenGL ES2, uncheck multi-threaded rendering. Um, Android minimum API level, we want to change that to 17, I believe, is what they want. So now that should be good to go for Android. And we should be able to just plug in a phone and hit build and run. And then for iOS, there's a couple different uh, instructions. Like you, you need to disable bit code and stuff. So um, there is a page on the Easy AR website for um, building out to Android and iOS. So I'll link to this in the description. So just read this if you are building out for iOS. Let's test this out here. Cool. Beautiful. Everything seems to be working perfectly. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.